You know, guys, I think there's an experience we can all relate to. Seeing an ad for a knife or a picture of a knife on TV or something like that, and something stirs, and you just go, I've got to own that. All right, folks, welcome back. Thanks for joining me today. I do truly appreciate it. Like I said, folks, I saw a knife about 16 months ago or so that just kind of spoke to me, and I decided, you know what, I need to buy that knife right then and there, and I did. At the time, I was in the market for a good EDC blade, a blade that uh, met with my state laws as well as the regulations that, that I could carry at work. This knife fit the bill perfectly. It's a great size for what I needed. It's the LT Wright Coyote. Now, most of us are probably fairly familiar with this blade. It's been out, like I said, for about 16, 18 months, something like that. So today I want to go over the specs of this knife and then show you why I think this is a really good blade that kind of bridges the gap between an EDC blade as well as a bushcraft blade. Now, just to clarify what I mean by bridging the gap between an EDC blade and a bushcraft blade, but what I mean by that is quite frankly, it's good at both. It's a good size for everyday carry. It's not really large. It's not going to weigh you down. It's not going to make your belt sag or anything like that. It's large enough that you can cut through just about any size box. You can make meals with it. Uh, you can do just about anything in an everyday life type scenario. But at the same point in time, it's a good camp knife. I mean, it, it's really good at camp cooking. You can whip up fires with it. It's good for carving. It's good for processing game. So it kind of incorporates everything you want to do both in your everyday life as well as in a light crafting bushcraft type scenario. And like I said folks, I've had this knife for about 16 months, something like that. And just to kind of give an example of how well this works both in everyday life as well as a bushcraft type. I used this knife hard for about eight, maybe nine months and then my wife found it. And this is probably the first time I've held it since. So, and she's not a big bushcrafty type person, so she has used this extensively inside our home, you know, for opening boxes, opening letters, uh, fixing meals. She calls this her bushcrafty paring knife. So anyway, guys, let's run down some quick specs of this thing, and then I want to kind of show it off to you. A quick specs rundown on this blade. The overall length is 6 and 5 eighths inches long. The sharpened edge is 2 and 7 eighths inches long. The steel is 8 in, eighth inch thick D2. The grind is flat. The handle, this, this particular one is bead blasted micarta. It is also available in desert ironwood. It does come with hand peened brass pins in the handle and it does come with a classic LT Wright style sheath. Now on to the fun part guys. I would really like to highlight the EDC aspect of this blade or the EDC side of things. So let's go ahead and hit up the bushcraft side of things first. The flat grind with that minute secondary on this D2 steel allows it for a lot of fine cutting, a lot of precise work. Um, the nice fine point allows for a lot of controlled work, especially when processing game. I may be different from a lot of folks, but what I really like in a skinning and processing game type blade is for it to sit from heel to tip of my finger very comfortably. This handle allows for my three fingers to have a lot of purchase on the handle, which allows me to have a lot of wrist control, but also have about a quarter inch of that tip sticking out past my finger so that it's almost like an extension of my finger. So basically I'm just making cuts with my finger. I have not had the opportunity to go deer hunting yet this year. Deer season starts in about five days, which I'm really looking forward to. However, last season I did process 100% of about a 200 pound buck from skin to getting it in the freezer with just this knife. The D2 steel mixed with LT's famous heat treat, the edge stayed through the entire process. While it was hair popping sharp in the beginning, it wasn't in the end. However, it still had a really good edge, which allowed me to process that deer down with ease. The D2 steel is incredibly strong. The bevel profile of it allows it to split very well. So just because it is a smaller knife, doesn't count it out from the firecraft side of things. The spine on this knife is an LT spine. It is aggressively sharp. One of the most common things I use this knife for in an everyday life is just simply open packaging.
Cool. Fun stuff from Ride of the Rain. Saying eats cardboard. And like I've mentioned, the steel is D2. So it doesn't really even blink at cardboard, even over a lengthy period of time. This thing keeps its edge like nobody's business. Excellent for opening packages, breaking down boxes, that sort of thing. Show off a little bit of bank line here. I use bank line all the time, whether I have some in my truck, you know, I have some on the porch, just it's good for everything really. It's kind of like the cord you know, the duct tape of cordage. But anyway, this uh, four four lengths of it goes right through there. Another fairly common task is I take empty soda bottles, water bottles, whatever, and use them as impromptu containers fairly regularly, whether to drain liquids into um, or for my kids to play in a sandbox, stuff like that. Easy peasy. It's a pencil, right? Well, my family, we choose to homeschool our children. And as such, my kids are constantly needing their pencil sharpened. And this knife is a lot handier to keep on me and a lot easier to keep track of than those cheap little plastic pencil sharpeners. So I am all the time put an edge back on their pencils for them. Now this is something I know we're all familiar with. You have to check all the junk mail we get. And find out how much money we do or do not have in the bank. And then your most recent insurance rate increase. Excuse the odd angle guys, this is one aspect of this knife and sheath that I want to kind of highlight a little bit. One aspect that I have found the most handy. If you don't want to weigh your belt down with a belt sheath, or if you're like me, I have uh, two young sons, we wrestle and roll around on the floor quite a bit, and just having a, a knife on my belt is rather uncomfortable. It's a perfect size and shape just to slip down into your back pocket. It's handy and easy to get to, and simple to resheath as well. As I'm sure most homeowners can relate, I constantly have little projects going on here or there, making bookshelves or bunk beds or um, adding uh, shelves to my wife's kitchen, any number of things. And I don't know how many uh, carpentry pencil sharpeners I have purchased, and they always seem to disappear before I even get them home. So to go back to the whole pencil sharpening thing, I've given up on purchasing those carpentry pencil sharpeners and I just rely on whatever blade I have on me and before my wife and I'm not blaming her this is a nice knife she loves it and I'm glad that she has found a bushcraft type knife that uh, she will use um, this knife fits the bill perfectly the races folks as I mentioned guys I'm an IT and as such I make up a lot of cat 5 and cat 6 cabling at work in fact I do it basically every day but unfortunately I'm not allowed to film at work uh, it's just one of the regulations and rules anyway so I can't really show you that I don't have any cat 5 or cat 6 cabling here at my house um, but this is just regular 110 dual 14 gauge wire so kind of mimic what I do a little bit and honestly, I have done this before with this knife at my home. Last year, adding some spotlights to my house. Works great for that. And again, going back to the D2 steel, the contact with the copper on the edge isn't going to really affect the edge retention on it whatsoever. Well folks, that pretty much wraps it up for this LT Rack Coyote. Um, let's jump right into it. The things I like about the knife. Um, 
I've already been over a lot of those, so I really don't want to rehash it uh, too terribly much anyway. You know, I like the size. I love that it's a perfect length from the, the heel of my palm to the tip. It leaves just enough of the point left over where, you know, it kind of acts like an extension of my hand. Um, all in all, it's a perfect size for what I want to do with it. Um, I really like the fact of how, how useful it is in the woods. I mean, from light fire tasks to crafting to animal processing to camp cooking, um, bring that back into, you know, normal everyday life. You know, it's extremely useful in the kitchen. It excels at that. And in the everyday carry life, you know, I have taken a lot of video on this knife like I usually do. I don't know what all at this point is going to make it into the review, but uh, just tasks that it excels at in my everyday life. You know, I'm in IT. I make up a lot of network cables and stuff like that. This knife works perfectly for that, for removing the shielding, separating wires out. And I, I use it to pry out stubborn uh, power supplies and stuff like that on servers. Sorry, LT. I, I know you're not supposed to pry with a knife, but uh, bad boy. But anyway, other things I do in everyday life, you know, um, cut up fruit for my kids on the fly, open boxes, open letters, cut rope, cut packing packing material, you know, uh, cut tape. I mean, it's just, it, it fills the everyday niche. So, you know, this, I have a lot of high praise for this knife. I'm sure there's no hiding the fact that I'm very pleased with my purchase. And the price point of this blade is very affordable at $125 thereabouts. The price may have changed since the last time I saw it, but I will go ahead and leave a current link to the, the product details page on LT Wright's website in the description of this video. But guys, I have had a ton of fun showing this blade off to you today, so I appreciate you being here very much. If you like this video, if it, if it helps you make an informed decision on whether this blade is the blade for you, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button for me. It really does help me out quite a bit. Guys, if you want to continue seeing knife reviews, playing with fire, camp cooking, stuff like that, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button as well. And as always, guys, please hit up the comment section. Let me know what you think about this knife in particular, or maybe some similar knives, what knives you enjoy using in your everyday carry and everyday life. Anyway, guys. Like I said, I've had a ton of fun. Thanks for being here, and I will see you next time.